yeah, Matt, please. Okay. Uh, once again, thanks uh, for being here. I get to ask another question, which is pretty cool. Now, Kokua Council, you know, one of our issues is aging in place. My personal issue is a place to age. I am, um, I'm 70 years old. Um, I'm working full time. If I didn't, if I retired, all I'd have is social security and that would get me the, the nicest tent in Thomas Square, I swear. You know, I say Thomas Square because I'm a townie, but oh, Ka'a'ava, that's nice. But you know what? You got to know somebody, right? You just can't move out in a tent there. Anyway, um, this has uh, been touched on, but this is specific to renters. Uh, in Hawaii, a landlord can double the senior's rent. You got 45 days to comply or get out, you know. Or you can evict a long-term uh, renter without any reason. Now, aside from building more affordable housing, and I get the logic of building affordable housing, you get some money, uh, build houses, you get some jobs to the hammer and saw brothers, you know, and sisters now too. So I understand that. But aside from that, are you willing to consider any of the following measures to protect renters? And that would be limiting the percent rent can be raised. For instance, Oregon, uh, state law, you can increase the rent 7% plus the inflation rate. So a law limiting, um, some kind of limit on the percentage rent can be increased. Two, requiring longer notice for large increases in rent. In Hawaii, you got 45 days to respond and double, they triple your rent, you got 45 days. And also number three, requiring cause for eviction. A lot of places you can't evict long-term renters unless you show cause. So any of those uh, up for consideration uh, for you? All right, I believe Matt would be the first to respond to um, Doug's question. Yes, yeah, Malu Doug, I, I would be more than happy to look at, at all those pieces of legislation and consider them. I think that Anything um, that is a community we can rally around uh, to solve the, the housing crisis that we're in, um, I think is something we have to consider uh, because we see it affecting everybody um, dramatically, right? Particularly our kupuna, like you said, um, you said not just age in place, but a place to age, right? Was what I think you said. I mean, even talking to, um, you know, folks that run care homes, for example, I know that they're under constraints based on how much they get from, from the state. And we're looking at a, a situation where we might not have enough places to support our kupuna. And so I think it's it's vitally important that we be investing as in many programs, um, structures, organizations, housing opportunities that we can um, to ensure that we're, we're doing, doing just that. I think that was, I think that's also what I took away from the you know COVID nineteen pandemic was that um, as as a collective we will, were willing to be mindful of the entirety of our community, particularly our kupuna, uh, and just given that I know that together we can really make these decisions and projects and policy decisions that support you know folks being able to both age in place and have a place to age. Thank you very much, Matt. All right, Makua. That's a, a thank you for the question because you got my mind thinking right there. And knowing these districts, a lot of the times the people that do raise these rents and kick people out and do all these things are foreign investors that come in and buy these homes after Kupuna or living there for a very long time because local families are so quick to kick Kupunas out or raise their rents, you know, exponentially. I really think now that I think about it, as a council member, we could implement some type of policy where you can have an adjusted land tax rate so that you don't have to raise that rent on a long-term renter or a kupuna and put some kind of policy in place where there's a give and take so that we can keep the kupunas there and we can actually give a little bit of a subsidy on the, um, because we've been talking that, about that, to uh, offset that cost because I know the high cost of living, a lot of inflation is due to Fed and a lot of these other things that we can't control right away, but we really can control what we do in our communities. I think a lot of people would be willing to work together with Kupuna and work together with the city if you understand that we could 
subsidize our property taxes somehow, especially if you have long-term renters and especially Fupunas, especially over a certain working age like you, sir. I'm seven year old. I commend that. Um, I hope I work hard as well and, and have the energy when I'm your age. That is amazing. But should you not want to and you want to just relax in Ka'ava, I really think some kind of policy that offsets. We don't actually have to do that. I really look at ways of bringing our local community back to our communities because they're much more willing to work with our kupuna than someone that just says, no, you're out of here 45 days. I want to rent and buy it for an investment property. We really got to keep our communities intact to really understand how we can address these issues and not be afraid, like I said, to put policy forth that can adjust that rate so that we can do it. Thank you, Makua. Matt, Thank do you, you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, just to continue the conversation, right? I, I think that it's important that, you know, as we make, you know, all these decisions as the council, right? And whoever ends up there makes the decisions about, you know, what types of laws to pass, how to appropriate money. You know, I think we can all see how interconnected all of these issues are, right? Being able to age in place or have a place to age requires access to housing that you can afford, it requires access to, you know, medical care. And that relies on like infrastructure, public transportation, you know, when the Kahana Bridge um, closed down, you know, folks called concerned about being able to access dialysis, right? And that across the district, you know, being a rural district, we see issues with access to uh, medical services, access to first responders, right? Uh, public safety issues that I think keep all of us safe. And so I think that it's important um, that, you know, as we, whoever ends up at, at the city council understands um, how to navigate, right? Those conversations, who to talk to, how to get it's gone over a minute. Mahalo. You know, I just I just want to point out as as additional information that uh, my full time job is with Hawaii Meals on Wheels, and mm -hmm. I mentioned that because yeah. we see uh, older people, seniors, kupuna as not only consumers of uh, social services, but like me, providers of social services. A lot of older people are also our volunteers. Uh, in fact, Rick is one of our volunteers. So just wanted to point that out. And the fact that I myself was homeless uh, not too long ago, 20, 2014, I wasn't substance abusing, I wasn't mentally ill. It doesn't take much to be down on the, sh uh, on the street. I uh, just wanted to point that out. And thanks for answering the question. All right, um, I think we have Mak min one minute for Makua to add. Sir, I, I understand that all too well. My grandmother almost just met, moved to my house because she was about to lose her place. My grandfather passed away. The um, Meals on Wheels, thank you guys very much. My papa ate those before he passed from cancer. I would go downstairs and because it was a senior delivering it, I'd walk down and I would make sure that they didn't have to come all the way up to deliver it. And it's really close to my heart, these issues. And that's why I said a lot of these homeless people and these issues, if you understand and go into these communities, not everybody's on drugs. Not everybody has mental illness. There's a lot of people that we can help right away. But you have to be able to integrate yourself into these communities to do so. And understand that, you know, having a desk job and being a lawyer and all that stuff is cool. But we have a lot of those in the city right now. We need people from these communities that understand these communities. When we say we need to in better communicate with the communities, how can you better communicate with a community person? that the community has raised, lived there their whole entire life, know every stream, river, fish, cow, I mean, dog at one point on their street. Like it's, it's my pleasure to be here. And I thank you all, all very much for considering. Thank you. Thank you, Makua. All 